Uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank Dr. Sirisha Kumar for giving me this opportunity and the Scientific Committee Chairman, Dr. Parthar Biswas, sir, for giving me this opportunity. There's no other tissue in the body which has undergone all this. Incised, removed, split, excised, dissected, cauterized, galvanized, heated, coagulated, irradiated, rotated, depositioned, inverted, transplanted, and grafted. Way back in 1953, Dr. Rosenthal had commented about it. And what is so special about this tissue? Despite all these, it's notorious for its recurrence. We are going to talk, talk about how to reduce the recurrences and one of the techniques which is used most common technique that is conjectival autografting. So in any case of pterygium, I would like to do conjectival autografting. Let's also remember Shushruta, our own. What is important here, way back in 100 BC, he had described the pterygium procedure. And please look at these two particular sentences, two particular points root of the pterygium should be pushed back from the black outline and it has to be removed in toto, even if necessary with a scarifying agent. But then we all know what the scarifying agent is to do. What are the options we have as of now for treating pterygium? Simple, old, bare sclera, we used to do this long, long, long back or transposition of the head, shifting the head to a different direction so that it grows elsewhere. Conjectival autographs or rotation grafts, amniotic membrane grafting or lingual conjectival autographs or use of any adjuvant, those scarifying agents which he was talking about, these are not scarifying, but reduce in the, or use of lasers. Of these, the three common procedures that are, that are uh, used nowadays of this, something to do with grafting. Either it could be conjunctival, amniotic, or LCAT, what you may use. As regards the recurrence rate, that's the most biggest problem. Now, if you look at the recurrence rate, I've taken just one article, different article gives different recurrence rate. This was a meta-analysis, actually. But then, if you look at the lowest recurrence rate, it is with this. Conjunctival autograft with fibrin glue. Of course, there are a few procedures perfect or others with an even lesser uh, uh, recurrence rates, but uh, not many of us are doing those procedures. Among the common procedures performed, it is the conjunctival autograft with fibrin glue that gave the best possible results in terms of recurrence. And of course, worst, obviously we know, either bare sclera or the primary closure that we used to do. Now, how does this help in preventing the recurrence? Limbal autographs have been successful by two methods. One, it corrects the limbal dysfunction. In case of limbal insufficiency, LCAT, limbal autoconjectural transplantation, is much better. But more importantly, it acts as a barrier against any conjunctival infection of the cord. So it's a physical barrier. Of course, it can supply the stem cells if those are used. In case of any suspicion that it's going to, already there is a stem cell deficiency and it's going to worsen, then it, the same autograft can be obtained. The graft can be obtained from the other eye. Two methods. One, either we place the graft, slide it and place the graft or a rotational grafting can be done. Rotational grafting is a cumbersome procedure, can be done for smaller lesions, not for larger lesions. The preferred technique is a conjunctival graft where it is harvested from the superior part of the conjunctiva preferably and then slided over the cornea and then fixated. Now I'll be showing three different methods of what I should do and simultaneously talk about it. This was a video recorded I think way back in 2003 or 4. It's a long video. I'll be fast forwarding this. First of all, measure the tibium. Make sure we mark on the superior part of the conjunctiva. Use a mark. And then dissect the conjecture, uh, dissect the pterygium. Whatever, there are various methods for this. Dissect the pterygium, make sure the fibrotic tissue is removed completely, the subconjectival tissue. Meanwhile, uh, trying to retain as much of conjunctiva as possible. Remember, pterygium, it's not the fault of the conjunctiva, but it's a subconjunctival uh, elastotic degeneration. 
so that subconjunctival tissue we have to concentrate remove it at the same time taking care not to damage the medial rectus particularly in recurrent pterygium uh, cases primary pterygium it's easy but recurrent pterygium cases we have to be more careful and then in this case those days we used to use mitomycin c also i have used the mitomycin c then infiltrate xylocaine in that marked area the same size is marked here but however when we cut you will be noticing that it will be slightly larger than the marked area that we take and with the conjunctival scissors the flap is created making sure that it's slightly larger than the marked area as well as the thinnest possible flap without any conjunctival button holing is to be obtained so that tenons if at all if it is there has to be removed so that there is better addition here so i'll try to first one now how do we state this remember this limbal orientation has to be maintained here so after separating the graft it's better to slide it or at least you some people use a linear mark so that it can be in this case i have got hold of with two forceps and then shifted it so that the limbus part remains on the limbal side and this is one of the oldest cases fibrin glue was not available we had not designed any new techniques so i'll be using 80 vicryl to suture this point to be noted and this fast forward to the end point to be noted is the perfect opposition has to be obtained any space that is left out there's a chance of recurrence the donor area is also sutured now with the advent of new techniques we got this somewhere down the line we got glues biological mark the conjunctiva make sure that you mark the area where there is a difference from the normal conjunctiva to the abnormal that much is enough and then the subconjunctival issue is removed sorry and for fast forwarded making sure that there is a polishing done and then the graft in this case was slided the glue appears in two different containers but one on each side fibrin and the other one on the each side again make sure that there is very good opposition on all sides so that in the sorry in then make sure that this opposition is done the glue is put on two different surfaces so that there is enough time for opposition lack of time this is the glue very costly nowadays it's not available so we have the indian variants but the indian variants are not working so well one of the alternatives that came up a few years back was to use patient's own autologous uh, serum how do we obtain this i'll skip the pterygium removal part the conjunctival graft is obtained slide it onto it but what is more important before this graft was obtained this area was cauterized so that there's no excess blood and then just before placing the graft fresh bleeding is induced among one or two we need fresh blood remember that and this works as well as the fibrin glue my last slide now which is better suture glue or autologous blood now that's what is answered here if you carefully read it fibrin glue remains the most effective method why is this because it's easier to do holds on longer but then when we compare it if easier alternative would be autologous blood it's an effective alternative easily available economical but then what is the problem here if fresh blood is not used we will lose that graft the next day use of sutures old technique more surgical time more complications so i would prefer to do my autologous uh, i mean autograft with autologous serum nowadays and if you carefully look at this these are the techniques that are available forget about the first two or three all the others have a conjunctival autograph for recurrent area we use that chance thank you once again for providing me this opportunity